Well, there is yet another Democratic candidate running for president. Former Pennsylvania Congressman Joe Sestak is candidate number 25 to announce a run. He is a retired Navy admiral who served in the Navy for more than 30 years. He served Pennsylvania's 7th District in Congress from 2007 to 2011. Former Congressman Joe Sestak joins me now from Des Moines, Iowa. Thank you so much for being here, Congressman. Why Thanks for having me aboard, Alex. Certainly. Why do you feel the need to run now, and why announce at this stage in the race? Well, Alex, uh, I don't know if you might know that my daughter got brain cancer when she was four years old, and that's why I got out of the Navy. You know, I got out of the Navy to take care of her and went into Congress, but unfortunately, it came back about a year ago. It's the same brain cancer, a demon that took John McCain's life and Ted Kennedy's. She beat the odds a second time, which is 8%. And so you, you kind of dealt the hand of cards you're given in life. And uh, it's a pretty good hand, though. I mean, the doctor came out for the surgery from retirement. She was saved. And so, again, I'm paying back my country for the wonderful health care plan I did. And, yeah, I'm a little late. But as I told someone else, she also gave me a sign some time ago that said, life's not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about being out there dancing in the rain. And, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But I think that this is an important one, and I'm bringing certain things to the primary that I hope people will listen to the message and what the attributes that the military, the Navy, the nation has invested in me that I think can help serve this country. And I know as a Navy grad, you certainly started with experience as well, but you were unsuccessful in two Senate campaigns in Pennsylvania. That was back in 2010 and 2016. And both of those primaries, we mentioned Joe Biden. Well, he campaigned for your opponent. Biden, of course, is now the front runner in this race. What do you think of the campaign he has run so far, and do you think you can catch up? Let, you had three important points in there. Let me take each of them, if you don't mind. As you know, I represented a two-to-one, almost, Republican district, second Democratic Congress since the Civil War. But we worked so well that I won my second race in that Republican district by 20 points, and I didn't spend one dime of the $3 million I raised on one political ad. I did run for Senate. I was asked to. But then Specter, Senator Specter switched parties. And no, I won against him, against the entire opposition of the party, because the issue was accountability and answering for oneself to people, not party. Pe people above party or self. And then I did lose the general. But our gubernatorial candidate lost by 10 points. I lost by two. Four congressmen lost by a combined poll of 11. But then in the next race, yes, you're right. I ran against my party's desires, and they told me as I was walking across Pennsylvania to meet the people of the nation, to meet them and talk with them, I got a call and said, don't, just go back to your office and fundraise. When I didn't, they thought somebody who, yeah, they poured over $6 million, my party did, against me, and I understand that, but that's what I want to bring to this race. Number one, accountability for people above self, no matter the consequences to oneself, above party. Second. I think that people are in this race are fine individuals. I just happen to bring something else besides accountability. We need a breadth, a depth of global experience where people who voted for that reckless war in Iraq have never been held accountable because they didn't understand the militaries, they can stop a problem. They can never fix a problem. Look at Iran today. We're tr we fixed it with diplomacy, and now we're break walking away. We need someone that can protect the American dream by stopping America's retreat from the world, telling our bruised allies left behind it's a wrap, because we can't handle global, global warming unless we convene the world for it. Even the Green New Deal in 10 years won't be enough. Only 15 percent of the greenhouse emissions, because Saudi Arabia will use as much energy to ex handle its air conditioning to power its air conditioning in 10 years as exports and oil today. So my bottom line is accountability for, to people. Second, global experience. And third, the willingness to stand up and restructure policies in America that only see the growth of inequity for too many, not the growth of economy. And we always appreciate our veterans. So you served in the Navy for more than 31 years. I want to commend you for your service. It's been critical on how this president has handled foreign policy. How would you handle the current tensions with Iran? You mentioned some of it there. And do you think that the president was right to hold off on retaliatory strikes? That's not the real question. We never should have gotten into that spot. America broke its word when he withdrew us from an accord with Iran where they kept theirs. Where's the accountability for America's word? We had removed the nuclear infrastructure that was in Iran, where even at their best efforts couldn't have rebuilt it in a year. And if we ever do, as they're about to, because they are rebuilding it now, have to do a strike that can go and destroy that nuclear infrastructure that's under 300 feet, Alex, of hard rock, 
We can't do it from the Persian Gulf with our carrier battle groups. I've operated there. Our sonar doesn't work. We can't find their 19 mini submarines. And they'll pickle off their torpedoes so against our carriers. So we've got to go outside the Straits of Ramuz. It would take us weeks or months to destroy their nuclear infrastructure, as they have hundreds of long-range missiles that could rain down on Israel or our regional allies in the meantime. The key to remember, Alex, is this. In Iraq, that's our lesson. Militaries might stop a problem, but they don't fix a problem. As we unleashed Shia against Sunni, and it created ISIS. In this situation, diplomacy had fixed Iran. Why the hell did we break it and say military is going to try to stop it? Nor economic sanctions, because we convened the world, including Russia and China, to bring Iran to the table to throw out their arms. No, the first thing I do as I get into office, one of the first, is re-sign up to that accord, because that is protected America by removing their nuclear weapons capability, Alex. All right, former Congressman Joe Sestak, thank you for your time today. It's a pleasure to be with you, Alex. Hope to be on again. Thank you.